What is the most disturbing thing you've heard said casually? Experience 1. I was a camp counselor during the summers in high school and often had the youngest group of boys, usually 8 to 9 years old. While we were at the lake catching frogs and tadpoles and stuff, one kid picked up a bag with the group's frogs and spun it around and then slammed it into the ground very hard killing the frogs. My co-counselor kind of yelled at him like, Why would you do that? You killed them. The kid responded with this weirdly sick smile. I take the lives of things all the time. I take the lives of rats. I take the lives of squirrels. I take the lives of snakes. I take the lives of dogs. I even killed a cat once when I caught it. Everyone was kind of stunned by this. Even the other kids were creeped out and nobody seemed to respond for a long few seconds. My co-counselor and I were like, okay, that's enough lake for today. The kid was weird. He didn't have many friends and we thought he was bullied because he got picked on early on that summer and we later found out beat the crap out of the kid who picked on him, but it turned out the kids knew better than us that he was a complete psycho. I don't know what happened to him. He moved away so didn't come back to camp after that year, but I'm convinced he'll end up in a news headline someday. Experience 2 Met a fellow teacher, who was around 67, for coffee and he casually said, When I was 30, I was sleeping with a load of 13-year-olds. They were just throwing themselves at me. I left shortly after, walked back to the school and informed the owner that if this man taught children I'd quit on principle. Turns out he had already been banned for pinching a kid's nipple. Experience 3 I was working at a gas station when I was 17 or 18. The corporate offices were directly behind us, so they would come and get lunch and snacks from time to time. One man in particular always came to my register. One day, when his wife stepped away to grab something, he casually said to me, I want to tie you up, throw you in the back of my truck and drive away. It was the creepiest thing anyone had ever said to me, and the way he said it so casually and nonchalantly. I quit very quickly after that. Experience 4. Something I once heard a passing stranger say for which I have no context, he wears a scarf around his neck so you can't see where he's decaying. I've been curious for years and it annoys me that I'll never know. Experience 5. I worked in medical health equipment delivery in college for a short amount of time. I was delivering some equipment from the company to a sweet old couple. The husband was wheelchair bound with severe issues. As I was doing the assembly within earshot of them, the old man was groaning saying he had given up and was ready to check out. His old lovely wife was sitting there rubbing his face giving him words of encouragement. Come on Jim, you are the strongest man I have ever known. You will come out of this. You are a fighter and survivor. Remember who you are. You are the man that killed three people, and the cops didn't catch you. I pretended I didn't hear that and noped it out there. Edit, I have no idea if they were messing with me, but they did not mention it later. The dude was in the Korean War and had some crazy dry dark humor due to PTSD, but the wife? If it was some twisted joke, they got me for sure. I was the only one that delivered to them, and we were on a friendly basis. Experience 6. I'm a pre-K teacher, and one day when I was doing lessons, one of my four-year-old boys asked me if I kill small animals. Horrified, I said no, why would you ask me that? And he said, I want to do that because I'm not big enough to take the lives of people yet. Had to report it to my admin staff, they called a meeting with his parents, but the parents just laughed it off. I'll be looking for that kid's name on the news in 15 years. Experience 7. Sitting on the bus with these two youngish lads behind me around 19 or 20. A young woman got on the bus and sat in front of me. One dude turns to the other dude and says, Oh crap, I'd hold a knife to that. Loud enough for me and the girl to hear. She gets off a few stops later and they do too. It's a few stops early for me, but I got off as well just to make sure they didn't follow her. Thankfully they didn't. I wished I'd just said something at the time and always regret that I didn't. I probably would these days, though. 
Experience 8. When I worked at Applebee's, a couple of the other servers also worked as dancers at the local strip club. I got pretty close with a woman named Sun. I was a young, attractive guy, and she was in her 30s with kids. She would flirt heavily with me and propose intercourse in the walk-in, but I would always just say thanks, but I'm not a public intercourse guy. And she would just shrug and say okay. All this to say she was very uninhibited sexually, but knew I wasn't interested in a sexual relationship and was okay with that. A couple of months go by. One morning we're doing prep work for the day shift and just talking about our childhoods while I was rambling on about growing up Mormon and leaving the church. Eventually, I shut up and she told me about her childhood. Her mom was a teenager who got knocked up by a roughneck. They all lived together with her mom's parents who were by all accounts decent loving people. Her mom and dad were into drugs and her mom died in a DWI accident when she was five. She stayed with her dad in the area until she was about nine and her maternal grandparents died of old age stuff. Her dad took the money from their inheritance and bought a house in the woods where he used her as his personal intercourse slave for the next eight years. At 16 or 17, her father died of complications from alcoholism and she was left totally destitute and essentially uneducated since her dad never registered her in school. School means guidance counselors and social workers. So, she moved to Florida where at least she wouldn't freeze to death and found work where she could. She said all of this to me as if she were talking about the weather or telling me a story about getting a tire changed. The most tragic true story I'd ever heard was simply life as she knew it. Experience 9 There was this dude in high school who ended up getting arrested and is now a registered intercourse offender for jacking off in class while putting his hand on a girl's shoulder. But before that, there was one day he was talking about how annoying a certain teacher was and verbatim he said, I wish I could travel back in time to when she was a little girl, choke her and R-word her and say, your future self did this to you. You deserve it. Experience 10. I was on a train one time and across the aisle from me was a young father, his wife or girlfriend and their two twin baby girls in a double stroller. A dude gets on the train and it's like a reunion. They're doing the whole hey how you been thing. He's kneeling on the ground playing with the girls and talking to them in a baby voice. Dad says to him, Hey, you ever see so-and-so? And without missing a beat, drops the baby voice and says, We had to screw him up. Bashed in his knees with the butt end of a shotgun. Goes right back to telling the girls how cute they are. Mom and dad didn't seem phased at all. I didn't get the whole story, but it sounded like snitches get stitches kind of thing. Experience 11. Was at an end of season event for my kid's baseball team when he was little. The coaches brought Italian ice for everyone. Mom has just served her kids and husband and comes back with her own. As she's sitting down to eat, I hear her husband loudly whisper behind her something like, Absolutely not. You don't need any more calories. I just watched her face fall. I can't imagine what their marriage must look like behind closed doors and what life must be like for her. Heartbreaking. Note that this woman was already probably a size 2 at most so this was not a scenario where there were serious weight related health problems. This guy was just a jerk and this really wasn't the first time that season but his reminders that they aren't living up to his standards were usually aimed at his kids on the field. I try to assume the best of people but that guy sucked. Experience 12. Worked on an island in SE Asia a while back. Someone came into work and asked to put up posters. After she left, I saw that they were of a friend of hers who had been missing for three weeks from an island nearby, a tourist. A boss of mine, a local man from the capital city who grew up in gangs, said, It's either he doesn't want to be found or he's dead. Either way, they'll never find him. I said, What makes you say that? He looked at me with a menacing grin. The best way to kill someone around here is to use truck tires. You take them to the jungle, beat them, tie them up, and burn them, burn so hot there is nothing left. I don't think he's ever done it before, but he definitely knows people that have. Experience 13 Many years ago, 
I was an assistant manager at a tobacco shop. We had one customer, I cannot remember his nickname, but I do remember his name. Ricky Ray last name. He was a Vietnam era vet. I had asked one of our other customers, she worked at the VA, about him because his behavior was so, so off. I got out of him that he was stateside and was a Marine. When the VA lady got back to me, she said there were several Ricky Ray last names from that time that were stateside and two had been seen since for mental health. My Ricky Ray last name was one of them. I had asked her to check up on him because he came in one day like normal by his clove biddies that he said kept the spirits away, but we were out. He conversationally started telling me about the demon woman that slept in his bed sometimes. She wasn't a human. She would come into his apartment sometimes and break his plates and sleep in his bed. He said if he could get the magic from the biddies, she'd start letting the bugs out of her stomach and then he'd be in real trouble. He said I guess I'll have to go home and kill her as if someone was accepting the fact that they'd outgrown their favorite shirt and needed to buy another. Turned out Ricky Ray was crazy but never violent. Experience 14 In my mid slash late 20s, recently married, and we had purchased our first home a few months prior. We had become friendly with some of our neighbors and they were having a cookout for Independence Day. A couple that lived somewhere in the neighborhood and we didn't know showed up. At some point, the husband from this couple introduces himself and I introduce myself. He asks if I live in the neighborhood, to which I say something along the lines of, Yeah, we just moved in a few months ago, and we really like it. The third sentence he ever says to me, a man I have never met before in my life. Yeah, I grew up here in town underscore name underscore here. It was great before all the Jews and N-words moved in. He clearly thought that as we are both white males, I would just have the exact same opinion. I did not have the same opinion, and thankfully, my wit kicked in immediately, for once, as opposed to coming up with a great response two hours later. I just looked at him and said, I'm half Jewish. I'm not half Jewish, but he didn't know me, and screw him and his blatant, casual racism. Watching this asshole stumble over himself as he tried to backpedal was fantastic. He never apologized, just implied he didn't mean me. I stood there for a few moments but never let him finish, I just walked away. I've seen him around the neighborhood a few times, but he has never said another word to me, and I'm just fine with that. Experience 15 I was in an accident once and was hospitalized. The accident left me severely disfigured. I was out of my mind on pain meds when I arrived at the hospital and told my family to call my girlfriend and let her know what happened and where I was. My mom called my girlfriend and my sister not knowing the particulars of my life called my ex. Neither knew the other had called and both ended up showing up. They arrived within an hour of one another while I was asleep. Since someone was there with me it gave my family a chance to go home and take a break. So, I woke up to my ex and my girlfriend talking to one another. Obviously, my girlfriend was mad my ex was there and things got heated between the two. My ex being level-headed suggested they step into the hall since I was half awake and in no condition to deal with the drama. As they're arguing in the hall voices are being raised until finally, a nurse comes to rein the situation in. The nurse breaking them up made my girlfriend leave. As she was leaving, she yelled, You can have his ass. It's not like I want to be with some burnt up scar dude anyway. He's screwed. At this point, I was still bedridden and hadn't seen a mirror. I was aware my body was screwed but had no idea what I actually looked like. Hearing that was such a gut punch and it really messed with my head at the time. Experience 16 Quite recently, a friend's boyfriend. We were all finishing with a climbing session and she fell from a big height and felt it in her upper spine. We were surrounding her telling her to be careful, checking if she had a concussion, etc. She was a bit shaken. Her boyfriend then said jokingly, If you die, I'll just freeze your body and use it for intercourse, haha. Everybody froze. She laughed feebly and awkwardly. We've told him several times he's being a sexist jerk. She won't leave him, she tried once, but he manipulated her into coming back. 
These days, I can tell he doesn't understand why we're all avoiding him. He wonders why he has no friends and blames snowflake cultures sometimes. Absolute dick who thinks he's a good person. Experience 17. I worked with a temp who came from a pretty wealthy background. He once bragged about nearly killing a delivery driver while he was driving drunk and having someone in his lawyer dad's firm get him out of most trouble on a bunch of technicalities. It was screwed up, but that wasn't even the most screwed up part. The screwed up part was when he said, Yeah, the idiot even sued my family, and one of the things listed was that he cannot perform marital duties, which means I broke his midsection. The kid could barely get this part out, he was laughing about it so hard. He was eventually fired for turning the pressure all the way up on the balancer and riding an air gun 20 plus feet to the top of the fixture. He thought it would be fun and that everyone would laugh with him. They turned him into the safety guy. Experience 18. On my first deployment to Iraq, I was talking to a local interpreter trying to improve my Arabic. While talking about the palace, we were in the matter of factly mentioned it was owned by Uday Hussein, and that while working on it one day, he'd annoyed Uday in some small way. Uday took his drill from him, had his bodyguards hold him down, and started drilling into his ribcage. He lifted his shirt to show me a ragged scar divot that you could fit a softball in. I heard a ton of stories firsthand like this. For instance, a volleyball player who tried to get into the Olympics who said Uday would off people or torture them for poor performance. A friend of mine was on a mission later that killed that guy. Regardless of the stupid reasons we went to Iraq and whatever else happened, I consider the killing of Uday Hussein as a net positive for the world. We hope you enjoyed listening to today's stories. If you want to see more stories, check out these videos or check the links in the description for more videos. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And ring that notification bell.